day three. Today we are doing the east route, which looks a little bit phallic, should we say. I think I probably mentioned it last week, but um, this one is going towards like the King Cloven Bridge, Glen Almond and places like that. But today's sh should be okay. I think the weather's still meant to hold up quite a lot for us. Join me if you're still interested and you want to see me and my dad just go, oh my God, look at the view. Oh, these roads are great. <laughs> so yeah, join us. Oh, as you might be able to tell, might uh, give this a wipe. I've probably just made that worse. Uh, by the huge black clouds over there, it's been a bit hit and miss on the weather. It's uh, lovely at the moment. Five minutes ago, it was absolutely caning it down, and then it's sort of sunny, and then we get a bit of rain again. It's not too bad. I think, like I mentioned before in the prep for a long ride video, as long as you've got waterproof gear, yes, okay, it's not as nice because you don't, you're not as trusting, lobbing your bike into a corner kind of thing. But as long as your gear is waterproof, like I'm bone dry still. I don't know whether I mentioned it yesterday, but I managed to, I, I don't know what happened, but the, well, I do know what happened. I've got a cigarette lighter. I don't know if you can see it down there, like 12 volt cigarette socket. This red lead here, that runs into the tank bag which has a, on the end of it has five USB sockets. Really good, and it just means that I can charge my phone, my GoPro, GoPro batteries, uh, sort of anything I want, really, off the bike while I'm riding it. But yesterday, I, um, I sort of, we pulled over and my phone went 6% battery left. Well, what's going on? And it, we did a bit of sort of fault finding and, uh, yeah, it transpired that the cigarette socket itself wasn't working. Uh, I didn't have my power bank on me, so I was a bit sort of stuffed. And then I remembered I had my drone in the top box. Because I bought the Fly More combo thing, it comes with uh, three batteries and it comes in a power bank type thing where you put all the batteries in, but it has a USB out socket on it. I didn't realise it works as a power bank. So I was actually using that to charge my phone and everything, which is how I managed to get all the route to continue recording and whatever, which was good. I was, <laughs> I was more worried about the route being recorded than having a phone battery. <laughs> uh, it was just a blown fuse. Look at all the um, condensation evaporating on the field over there. How weird is that? Don't know if you guys can see. really cool <laughs> so yeah I was charging two GoPro batteries I was charging that GoPro I was charging my phone Ooh, um, all off the thing and it obviously busts the fuse that's all it was so I checked this morning managed to find the fuse and I've uh, replaced that fuse so hopefully it won't blow again but yeah all good we're again the bike has been absolutely faultless today I won't go into it too much I rode something the other day which took my fancy. Yeah, Dad's pointed at that as well. Uh, I rode something the other day that really took my fancy. And uh, it's got me thinking about if I was, if I were to trade this in, what I'd get for it, what I'd need to do to the bike to get the sort of best money for it, if I could sell some of the bits and all that sort of stuff. It has got me thinking that like how reliable the bike's been apart from like stuff where I've buggered it up like I said the bearings before whoa Jesus <laughs> it's been absolutely faultless we've done let me have a look 37,310 miles and we've done a thousand and sixty seven miles so far on this trip 59 today oh yeah see it's quite nice isn't it pull up next to mickey v oh, bad road, yeah it was nice wasn't it were you going that way yeah. yeah away from the rain yeah fuck you rain going the other way i've also just adjusted the clutch lever just literally tweaked it out a bit 
Yeah, it's made the clutch so much nicer. Like even my, um, I don't know whether it's placebo, but even the clutch is shifting sort of gone. There you go, look. So smooth. I don't know whether that has any anything to do with the clutch lever, uh, clutch cable tightness at all, but I'm going to pretend it does because it makes myself feel better. The roads have been really nice on this. It's uh, we've been they've been a little bit unpredictable, and what I mean by that is the uh, although they are lovely roads, they're a little bit uneven surface. Like the you can see they're sort of wearing away and whatnot. Dad and I are really rusty today with a massive breakfast. <laughs> we, we've taken so many of these tight corners and they've really caught us out because we're not really paying attention. Uh, never ride on a full stomach, children. And the reason I'm talking to you now and not earlier in the ride is because I was chatting to Dad but then the send has just decided to kill itself in the rain. I'll try and put the road names on or at least the good road names on the bottom of the screen so you guys know which ones I'm taking and the route and everything. I've got some screen recordings, oh sorry, screen shots should I say. Uh, I've got some screenshots of the routes as well and they are on this All Trails app so I'll see if I can find a way of downloading them so you can actually see what the routes are that we did. And I will put links to Creef Cloverleaf in the description so you can go on the website and download the GPX files. Um, one thing is worth doing the GPX files are quite big so they're in four separate sections um, for like so north for example is in four separate GPX files stick them all on your computer merge them all together and then load it into your Garmin or your phone or whatever you're uh, whatever you're going to use a lot of the apps like so Kalimoto, Reva, um, I think even this all trails one they're all free apps but if you want to load a GPX file in, nah, 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 got to pay for that. Some of them you can work out a way of doing it. Dad's got a Garmin or a TomTom, -tom, I can't remember which one he's got. So uh, you can load them in, but yeah, it's worth worth merging the routes together. So it's one route because uh, yesterday and uh, Monday, Monday was it? Yeah, Monday. We had to keep stop, so we got to the end of one of the routes and we had to stop that loaded in the next part of the route and then we carried on. Which was, it was fine, it was like, but it was just a bit annoying. So worth doing that. And then you can follow these exact routes if you want. I think we just had to stop because Dad's making a call. But look at the state of this thing. It's absolutely cooked. <laughs> the state of these <laughs> this part sort of reminds me more of Wales oh that view Ooh, quick 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 go <laughs> Got out. Ooh, stones. Well, oh, it's pretty fresh tarmac. Of course, smells good. I'm never going to get this tar off my bike. <laughs> My front end just slipped then. Shit the bed, that was close. <laughs> oh, I thought it went round to right and then you went left and I was like, oh well, maybe it goes left then. And then suddenly, heavy, on gravel, on one time. <laughs> today we went out east, as I mentioned before. I didn't actually film that much today. Primary reason being that it was, um, I mean, I don't know if this is It's pretty wet. We left here and it was boiling, like absolutely boiling. If you aren't aware of the route, I'll stick it in this side for once. Started spitting a bit. 
Oh, no, that's all right. We're in waterproof gear. It doesn't really matter. Got heavier and heavier and heavier, and it got to a point where we were just. It it was really torrential rain. And it's fine. Like I I said before, and I'll say it again. Like if you've got waterproof gear, it's fine. Um, you're not that wet. You're like you're not getting wet, should I say? Um, it's just a bit of a buzzkill. And then an hour, another hour went past, and it was still torrential rain, like really really heavy stuff. Um, we'd had breakfast, we hadn't had lunch, and uh, <laughs> I started getting a bit annoyed, and I was just like, oh, I got fed up. We're really fed up with it, and I was just like. Oh, God. This is really starting to grind my gears now. Um, we pulled into Anstrother. I'll put in a picture or a location on somewhere on screen. And uh, as we pulled in, it subsided. Like the stopped raining, sun came out, started drying off. Sent the center obviously died hours ago. Uh, had a coffee and a little bite to eat and whatnot. And then we got back on the road, slightly drier, with the sun. We saw the rain clouds coming in, but we went along the coast. It's quite nice, nice little back roads and sort of nice coast road and whatnot. And it was really good, really good afternoon. Um, we did some sort of small back roads, went on like a freshly tarmac road, which was interesting to say the least. Nearly crashed it, <laughs> going down a road and uh, there was a hairpin. And uh, it seemed that they just dumped all the gravel on the corner, so I pulled the front brake on. That slipped out from underneath me, nearly bent it, that was fun. We're on the way back. Like, yeah, that's all right. Five miles from hotel. Guess what? Started raining again. It was uh, really, really heavy within a couple of minutes. Hailstones, literally everything. It was absolutely ridiculous. All like we were nice and dry just because of the wind and everything, so we'd all dried. Had our heat gloves on, had our heat vests on. It was only five ten miles, but by the time we got back here, we were just sitting in like a fucking bit of, bit of proper like <laughs> dick, what was it, dick dastardly or a little dog in wacky races where it's just um, <laughs> it was mixed emotions day, mixed emotions. It wasn't, road-wise, wasn't as interesting when you've done a day on the west coast and a day sort of north and northwest. You, like, nothing else is going to compete. It's just not going to cut the mustards, is it? I don't think I would have minded the rain as much if it was, uh, if it was nicer weather, if, if it was nicer roads, but, yeah, still quite nice. Um, and then we got back here, and the owner of the hotel had organised for the lady who set up Creef Cloverleaf to come in. She wanted to chat to us to find out what we thought, like what routes that we really enjoyed, if there was any bits we didn't really enjoy. Um, so we just sat there and chatted to her for a couple of hours. Really sort of genuine person, so it seemed really, really decent. And once that was done, we went down, walked down to town, found a really nice um, Italian restaurant, Dal, Dal Vinci's or something like that, I'll put in a name here. Uh, had a cracking pizza, pint, and like a really nice sticky toffee pudding that wasn't too sickly. So I finished off the day quite nicely. Tomorrow we were going to do the south route, which I'll stick up on here. Um, chatting to the lady, I can't remember her name, it's really bad, I'm really crap with names. Chatting with her and Dave and Richard. Basically we did most of it last time. It's a very similar day to today in that the, the scenery is not as amazing. It's more for the sites or like the tourist attractions like the Kelpies, which I'll stick in a picture. I'm going to stick loads of pictures in here, but I'll stick in a picture here of the Kelpies when we went uh, in May 2018. So looking at all the routes, we've uh, done quite a lot of them. And I think the weather's meant to be a bit naff again tomorrow. They have a thing called the Little Leaf, which is like a, a shrunk back version of the Full Clover Leaf. So the Full Clover Leaf, the routes are like 200 odd miles a day. The little leaf are, I think they're between like 70 and 90 a day. So what we're going to do is we are going to do the the little leaf north or northwest, and we're going to do the little leaf southwest. 
which is all west coast again but there's some really nice little roads in there i mean the bikes are filthy they really need to clean the my tires are well on the way out like i'm pretty sure they're going to be bald by the time i get home i know we don't we haven't done the full clover leaf but then i think um I think most the clover leaf is one of those things that gets you up here, gets you. If you've never been to Scotland before, it's absolutely perfect. It's genuinely like ideal. Uh, it doesn't cover things like Apple Cross and um, the places sort of further up north, like the Balagna Bar. It doesn't cover any of those, but this will really get you into it. And then um, once you're sort of a bit more well versed with the roads and how things are head up to the Apple Cross Pass and head up to the Balagna Bar and various other places up north. It's genuinely really, really good. I hope you'll be able to record a bit more and it won't be as spontaneous with the random bits of segment. Fire any comments over if you want, um, in, obviously in the usual places. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow for the final day. Later. I gotta go get into bed. <laughs>